DOT. I went to some of those meetings with them. Uh, their city council, they were all satisfied, uh, or at least their votes passed. I don't know if it was 100 percent or, or what the what the voting deal was on it, but I, uh, I believe it. Well, I know their MOU. They all signed it. So. The city of Navasota signed it in text doc, basically, which is a memorandum of understanding stating this is what we're going to do. We're going to provide an upgraded connection. We, we're going to widen 1488 so we do not to uh, we're going to I think it specifically says we will widen 1488, you know, to four lanes with, with feeders, et cetera, to accommodate the long term traffic projections so that they don't bypass Navasota unless uh, the county and, and you know I, th I forgot exactly what it says on that but they do they do I mean obviously they're saying they'll work with the county or Navasota if they if the time comes where the traffic volume exceeds that capacity they obviously are gonna have to come up with another solution but that's you're talking about I-45 at that point it's not signed that yes they yes, signed it once you hit six now it's 75, and they built a new connection out there at the south end of College Station that comes around to the University for, uh, 40, mm -hmm. I think it is. And that's, if, in my opinion, if that if a &M's involved, that's they're trying to make that connect from Houston. Yeah, to that's what they're doing. Absolutely. And the biomedical corridor that's yeah. out there that's right. Yeah. Yeah, all from the health center. center. And, and that's what, you know, that, all those people on both ends of that spectrum <laughs> putting pressure on TxDOT and the politicians to do this mm -hmm. project, that's what makes me feel that it's going to happen no matter what. What's the speed limit going to be on, on the I, I don't know. I think, it, I don't know, but I'm sure it would be 70 or at least. Probably 70, 75. 75. I'm going to tell us a quick update on the train. TCR has announced that their preference and it's just their preferred route would be the transmission line route, which is uh, closer to D-Dyes, between Iowa and D-Dyes, and runs south along the, through the entire county. But uh, be careful. that they I believe they did that to, to get uh, Matt Montgomery County off their back. Uh, and and they, they came up alive pretty strong. They have half a million people in that county, so it's a lot of pressure. And they will continue to move it until they, until they to finally give up. Yeah. And, and so... Uh, but the FRA uh, certainly states very clearly that, hey, that has not been selected by them. They're looking at the two routes. They're looking at actually several routes uh, throughout the, the, the region there. So um, all of these routes are still possible. The one right here on this BNSF, BNSF route uh, is possible. Just uh, make sure you, you realize that uh, the routes, those are just general routes. They can deviate from those lines that you see on the map very significantly. Right. Uh, they can't, we know they can't follow the BNSF route exactly because of the high-speed rail that would go off the track. So they have to straighten out those curves, and, and which means it's going to pull it away from the track quite a bit. So uh, they are, I've been up in, in, in the Capitol last week and the week before. I met with, probably met with, uh, I'm going to guess, 15 different representatives and senators generating uh, a lot of interest on passing legislation. I have, I have started an organization called Texans Against High Speed Rail. It's a 501c4. Uh, we applied for that status. Um, and we've hired a lobbying firm. So we're up there lobbying the representatives and senators, educating them on this project. The opposition has, has now has two lobbyists. They did have one, but last week they hired another, a second one. And I think that's a good sign. They're now getting worried. We're up there really pounding the message and making a lot of progress. Uh, and they have hired one of the top lobbying firms in, in, in Austin. So uh, in addition to that, we're going to continue to go back up there. We're, I'm going to go speak to the Royal Caucus, which is a, a House representative. It's just a House representative caucus group. And uh, they're allowing us 30 minutes to go up there and, and and you know, just educate them about this project and, and try to consolidate the uh, momentum against this project from, legis from a legislative perspective. I feel the legislative perspective is, is, a, is a key component to this because uh, 
well, and, and not just me, but the senators and the representatives all agree. We, we, we introduced our first bill to the, to the House floor in 1889. That was with Wilt Metcalf. That was my organization that, that worked with his office to, to do that. We have many more bills we're working on right now uh, that are going to be introduced as well. Is there any grassroots support for them? Sir? Do they have any uh, grassroots support at all? They do in the city of Houston and the city of Dallas. But in between there, there doesn't seem to be that's much support. That's where the war's got to be fought. In those two places, they got to understand that that thing can be helpful to them. And that's what we're trying to do. You know, that's a, we're working with a lot of, lot of different groups to, to do that. You know, the biggest thing is, is to stay involved, put pressure on your representatives, uh, getting, you know, David has a group, Grimes County Advisory Group. They, they are uh, starting a, to get uh, on Facebook, uh, on high-speed rail side of, of, of the uh, information that they're doing on a local level as well. We're trying, my group is, is not on the grassroots level. We're trying to work with all the grassroots level, but we're trying to take it to the U.S. Capitol and the, and the state capital. That's what we're fighting. What do they say about what they just did in California and across the across over on already? Yeah, see. three times start off at 30 million and it ended up at 98 million. So uh, when I asked that question to to Robert me. Eccles, they, they say they're better at estimating. Them. I live just across the tracks. I mean, my big concern is, you know, if they, they build a fence down each side of this thing. You're trying to pin them down on that at a particular point. It's a very important point to consider is uh, I asked, you know, how, how do they plan on doing that? Are they going to cut off any county roads? Or are they going to cut off any private roads? And, and they, they were wishy-washy on that. They would not commit to, to not doing that. And so I said, okay, let's just assume you, you don't. How do you, how do you plan on letting these people get across to their mm -hmm. house? He said, well, we're going to put a, a, and he called it a different word. I called it a culvert, a square culvert, you mm -hmm. know. And I said, well, how big is that culvert? And, you know, it was, it, hey, it's big enough to, to, I think to I drive told a car through it. And I said, oh, well, it's going to have to be bigger than that because they have oil field equipment. There are oil wells. You can't cut that oil well off. You can't cut that man's ability to get his hay, you know, on a, on a tractor trailer truck through there. And so you're talking about bridge height. That's 14 feet tall. And he, he, he thought and said, yeah, yeah, actually about 14 feet tall. And I said, then you're going to have to have dirt on top of it. You can't put the tracks on top of that culvert. And he said, yeah, well, that's right. And so you're looking at 25 feet now, roughly, you know, 20 to 25 feet. And then and I said, do you realize that there's a lot of driveways? There's a lot of private roads. Are you going to go like this as you're going 200 miles an hour? <laughs> and I said, that's not going to work. And he goes, no, we can't do that, so we're going to have to keep it elevated. And this is the scary part. I said, well, what's between those culverts? And it was dirt. And that's what they call that grade, a 25-foot tall amount of dirt with some culverts between, you know, or where your driveway is. So I call that the Great Wall of Japan. That's yeah. my, my name of that for that. And that scares me to death, you know. Yeah. And, I know you can't and, worry about it, but that thing's not going to happen. Well, we're going to try to stop road. it. But there's, there's no common sense anywhere in it. It just don't make any yeah. sense. It doesn't make any sense. And, and clearly we're going to present contrasting points on this road. So what I'm going to suggest to y'all is that the last public meeting that was actually held by TxDOT on this toll road was on February the 26th, where they presented the latest update of their plan to the Texas Transportation Commission in Austin. Ben was there. I was there. We both spoke. It was recorded, videotaped. It's available on the Internet for anyone to go view at their leisure. So you can go watch it for yourself and see what they said. There is still no mention in the actual plan that they presented to the Transportation Commission about any feeder roads on this project. The only mention of any feeder roads is in that letter that General Weber wrote to the county judge. And if you actually read how that is written, it's a very vague promise. They're giving $2 million for the county to spend at its discretion at some point in the future when they identify a need for a road. So within the actual project plan, there are no plans for any feeder roads. Now this is a 12 mile stretch of road. If you include the 2.1 miles, it will extend back from 1774 and back to the Montgomery County line. Again, no front roads planned for that two-mile stretch either. So taking that into consideration, in order to supply frontage roads to this project, if it's 12 miles, you need 24 miles of frontage roads to really be able to develop both sides of the road. That $2 million that they're promising us, 
might get you two to three miles of feeder road if you build a minimal road. It's not going to co cover very much property at all. If you look at the actual property owners that own the property along both sides of the road, there aren't any developers that are willing to participate in a, get, I'll pay half, the county pays half at this particular point. So there's not even an identifiable source for that. So just looking at the numbers, for the Grimes County segment of this road, it's roughly 10 miles, 9.8 miles. They're going to have an interchange at 1774 and interchange at 105. So 10 miles span in between, there's going to be two access points, one at FM 304, one at 306. It is five miles from 1774 to FM 304. No feeder roads, no access points for that entire five mile stretch. What happens if somebody has an emergency? What if there's a crash? What if there's a fire? Then you have another two mile stretch before you get to 306, the only other access point. So they use deceiving numbers. They say, well, we've got this 10 mile stretch of road and there's going to be four access points. But when you actually measure it from this point to this point is 10 miles and there's only two points in between where you can actually access. So you have to pay attention to the double speed. The numbers as far as the dollar figure, they're going to spend $240 million to build that 10 mile stretch of road. That's $24 million a mile. So if they're, it's going to cost them $24 million a mile to build the toll road, which is only a two lane road. That's it, two lanes. And yet they say that they can build feeder roads for $500,000 a mile. Those numbers don't compute. Something's not right there. Either they're overcharging for one or they're underestimating the other. So those numbers just simply don't work with all respect to what we're being told here. With regards to 1774 and Highway 105 and the, the printout from TxDOT where they're saying that they would need to expand 1774 out 350 feet and they would displace 24 residences, they're not going to expand, they're not going to build the toll road any wider than the existing FM 1774. They're only going to build two lanes. That's it. They're going to take 350 feet of right-of-way all across that 10-mile stretch to build a two-lane road that can be built within 90 feet. <coughs> and they will not expand that road. It, it, it's clear in their print, in their plan, that they will not expand that road until they retire the original debt and pay all costs of construction. So if you look at the history of toll roads in Texas, there's exactly one in the entire state that has retired its debt, and that's the one that connects Dallas to Fort Worth. Yep. This is a little bitty road through Grimes County. It's never going to retire that debt, so they will never expand that road. It's going to be this little bitty for the foreseeable future. But what they're doing to the property owners down there is they're going to come in, and they're going to take that 350 feet at today's prices and rob them of any future potential value of their real estate for the foreseeable future, even though they're not going to build on it. So that's why this is such a terrible project. And there's lots more information that I could share with you, but I know it's been a long evening already. And Dennis Hughes with Stock Grimes 249 is here, and he really has some very relevant information on actual plans that TxDOT already has on the books to expand our existing roads that hasn't been shared with y'all. So with that, I just want to thank y'all for letting me speak here. If anyone has a question that they want to ask of me, or anything that I said the last time I was here, or about what I presented here tonight, that's why I'm here right okay. now. So that being the case, I'm going to... County has come under attack from outside interest. We got the high-speed rail, we got two power lines, and we got the State Highway 249. And in order to protect the, all of the residents of Grimes County, we've got to work together and band together to fight the aggression that we're, we're facing. There are people who wish to take from Grimes County and not provide a benefit. And we need to ensure that Grimes County residents benefit from whatever is taken from us. And that's a, an immediate benefit, not an empty promise. Everything should be measurable. It shouldn't be an if or a when or a maybe.
we ought to be able to measure exactly what benefit we're going to get from it. So these are all bridges across Grimes County. They don't help us at all. They just take our land and they bridge across us. And uh, I'd like to ask for your support to not uh, to fight against uh, the State Highway 249 uh, and not support it in any way or fashion. In reference to, I think there was a handout or something the judge referenced about them, how wide they need to widen 1774 and 105 in order to build the same road. Well, it's interesting because this is a printout from the Texas Transportation Plan of 2035. And, it, and, and I'll give this to the mayor because I got more copies. But if you look in yellow, this is the plans for 1774 and 105. And I'll read it right quick and y'all can check me later. But the plan for uh, uh, State Highway 105 from the Navasota East City Limits, I'm sorry, it's 105, Navasota East City Limits to FM 1774, they want to widen to a four-lane divided highway. This was in, I believe the date was June of 2012. A High Point School was already there. The cemetery's been there for a long time. So they already had a plan to make it a divided four-lane highway. The same thing applies to 1774, a divided four-lane highway. That's Highway 6. That's the equivalent of Highway 6. They already have it in their plan, yet they're publishing about how much land and how many houses they have to move and all these barns, all this stuff. But they were already going to do it. So why don't we just go ahead and do this instead of take all this land out there and eventually still come back and do this. Because one day they will have to do this. So, thank you. Don't, please don't support the public. We got a highway, we got power lines, and we got pipelines all over the damn place. And I'm not sure folks know what eminent domain really means and how it works. Uh, I've been appointed by the district judge to sit on, as a commissioner on a three-man commission to hear eminent domain cases. And I've, I've sat on the one down at Carlos, uh, these folks that, uh, that lost their gas station down there. Uh, eminent domain is not granted to companies. It's, it's not something that folks can come in here and say, we got the right to do eminent domain on you. That's not so. Every eminent domain case has to be done in Grimes County by the county and district government. They cannot come in here and say, I'm going to give you X dollars and so forth. That has to be done inside. If the law intended for that to be done outside the state of Texas, they would have had sent it to Austin. They expect county government and the district judge to protect the citizens of the county. The uh, thing starts off when a, when, a, when a landowner and whoever is interested in taking his land can't agree on what the terms ought to be. Then it goes to this commission, and the commission sits down, and both sides, it's like, like a civil trial, both sides come make their case as to what they think the value of the land is. Commissioners make their decision, sign the document, and send it to the district judge who approves or disapproves, and then advises the folks involved. Both sides have the right then to say, no, I want a, district, I want a jury trial. I want a 12-man district court jury trial about the, about the value of my land. So I just don't want you to get the idea that somebody can come in here and tell you what, they, what they're doing. They can't. I was a county judge 25 years ago. We've got a newly elected governor who has uh, voiced his opposition to toll roads. I think we have a, uh, a little better chance than to just take what they give us. I think that a toll road, uh, in, uh, just as the judge explained on the uh, train that's coming to this part of the county, that's exactly what the toll road is doing to the south end of the county. And uh, it's going to be the same scenario if y'all have ever tried to pave one little blacktop road here in the city. 30% of what they give you is probably administration costs. Uh, $2 million isn't going anywhere. But the biggest, the biggest issue that I have with this whole tow road, these bullet trains, this whole issue, is somebody is coming into our county, seizing our property, and giving it to someone else to make a profit. And that's wrong. That's as wrong that is as un-American as you can get to take somebody else's property for somebody else's game. Carless, overpass, mm -hmm. all that stuff, well, 
that a guy lost a little piece of clip off a little piece of ground. wasn't significant. But we found out if you come down 244 and you pass Yankees Tavern and you turn right, you're going to have to turn right to go out to the highway and go toward Bryant, right? You, you're, able to, you're able to turn left another way, but, but you have to go that way. Uh, right now, there's double lines in front of it. So you can't turn back to the left. You do. But we can't, we can't leave him to turn back. Not to the left. The, the map that he's briefing us, the text off the guy's briefing us off of, sitting here, and he's showing us to come down here, and you turn and go, and the guy said, no, my property's right across the road. I want, I've forever been able to drive over to it. And, and uh, the guy said, well, you can still do that. You can't do that. There's going to be a curb there where the yellow line, double yellow lines are. It's going to be a curb there. So you can't make that turn. So I said, where do you... Where do you expect the fella come in that condition? Where do you expect him to go? And he said, I don't know. Where do you have to go to turn left? To roll down. He didn't know. He didn't know. And he's coming in here solving the safety problem that he moved a half a mile up here to make you do a U-turn in the middle of the road at roll down. If he's not going to run over the yellow lines, it's supposed to. And he said, no, you can turn. And I told him, I said, you're ticked off. It's against the law. Why, why are you telling me the solution is to break the law? You know, you're supposed to be working for the state. So I lost confidence in Texas.